everyone. Today we are going to talk about the graphics pipeline in this lesson. If you uh, have no knowledge of the subject matter from the ground up, then generally the first question that should be asked, and I hope you do, is what is a pipeline? Uh, there are different kinds of pipelines, graphics pipelines, asset pipelines, um, you could have a physics pipeline, whatever essentially it's, it has a very loose definition in terms you could really call anything a pipeline in a way but uh, we've kind of defined it specifically in, in in certain terms to be the stages or steps or operations you need to perform on some entity to take it to its final destination from its raw form or its beginnings so to speak in graphics pipeline terms it's the steps or operations or stages that an object, we'll call it an object for now, has to travel through to be drawn onto the screen. So you start with a, a model of a square or something and it needs to be drawn in the top right corner for some reason because that's where it exists. Well, it has to travel through this pipeline before we determine where it's going to be placed and where it's going to be drawn. Okay, so we'll head over to the whiteboard and we'll start talking about graphics pipeline. So these stages or steps, we're going to call them spaces, which is the standard definition. Um, and it makes logical sense when you understand that each transformation between each step or operation, each stopping point, is really just a change of basis matrix from linear algebra, where you're moving from one vector space to another vector space. So we call them spaces okay so let's write them out real fast we have uh, model space model goes to world space from world we view it from the camera from the camera to the viewport and finally screen space okay so we break them into these spaces for two reasons. Uh, the first is it's just logical uh, from a human standpoint um, that these are the stopping places. For example, I mean, you start with a model of something, some square, circle, triangle, whatever, and you put it into a world, into a game world. Then you view it from some camera. Then you eventually draw it on the screen. And I'll explain how these two are actually the same space in our definition for now and how they could potentially not be, depending on how you go about your uh, graphics engine. So uh, the second reason why we break them up into these spaces is because uh, that, that way we can stop at certain areas, certain stages in the pipeline. Like for example, in world space, we could do culling and clipping. in world. Uh, we could also find some space in which we want to stop and do all our lighting calculations. This lighting can be done in world as well. That's just preference. Shadowing as well, which is not the same as lighting, but we're not going to get into that right now. So this is why. We also bre we break it up for two reasons. One, because it makes sense to us logically, and two, so that we can stop at different stages and perform certain operations. So some of this... Uh, mumbo jumbo will start to make sense as we define each space so why don't we jump in and talk about model space so here's model space this is the first stage so let's take an object let's define a model of a square so model space can be thought of as uh, an object with respect to its own universe. You can think of it like yourself, like you could be the center of your universe, I could be the center of my universe, and you are in relation to me, maybe three feet to my right or my left. That's because my origin or the origin of model space is my direct center. Okay, so I define a model, an artist will define a model of a character or something uh, with respect to itself, so it'll be it'll have an origin at its center. That way you can take the object and you could place it 
in the world somewhere uh, at 3 3 or whatever and it would actually exist at 3 3 or at least it's the center of its body will exist in 3 3 in the world uh, this is convention you could technically do whatever the hell you want you could put the you know you could put the origin off to the right and you could actually define your model I don't know you could put it over here what if you want your model over here instead you could do that fine I don't know why you would it would make things complicated in the sense that if you put this object at 3 3 you'd really be putting this origin at 3 3 or 3 4 or 5 7 or whatever and that would be offset now so this object wouldn't actually be at that location instead its origin would have been um, that's for you to figure out if there's some reason why you would want to do that but we're going with the standard here which is the logical sense where you make an object the center of its own world okay so moving on to world space let me mark my axes <clears throat> so in world space now we're looking at uh, an entire world that's populated with multiple models a model of multiple instances of an existing model you could have one model of a square but there could be four or five of them in the world at different positions and orientations and scales and so that's the general idea let's say that we take this square and let's say he exists over here in the world so this transformation from this space into the world is the result of scaling rotating and translating an object so we're going to remember this scale rotate translate yes I wrote them backwards you'll know why later so remember that <clears throat> so I'm going to scale this object rotate it translate it and it's going to end up over here now it's in the world this world also is populated with other objects so there could be I don't know circle over here or some kind of triangle Let's put it, I don't know, let's put it over here. So this could be our world. We're populating the world with different models by performing certain operations on said models. So let's call this world space. This is the second stage of the pipeline. Now let's take it to the third. <clears throat> so go to camera space so in the world we define a camera and a, ca a camera exists in our world looking at our objects right so we could say that maybe it's something like this yes it's a bad square there so let's say this and I'll put some crosshairs on it so you can see the center of it so here's our camera in the world So let's take a look at the next space. All right, how would this look in camera space? Well, this would be towards the bottom left of the screen, or the camera, rather. So it looks something like that, yeah. And then uh, this is kind of in the corner, a little bit like this. Let me grab the right color be a little bit like this it's probably closer to the origin than that but you get the point and for the sake of viewing it this is what it looked like so you can look at it's kinda of like we took this and we rotated it back to the origin so that we could see it dead on and what we did also is we moved the origin of the camera we move the origin to become the camera's origin right so the origin of camera space is you guessed it the middle of the camera so the crosshairs of the camera determine now so looking at it through camera space <clears throat> we see we're looking at it through the world of the camera's point of view and we now see the objects exactly where we wanted to view them from there uh, from there, we're going to move on to our what I'm going to say is our last space for now, our fourth space. Now, this is viewport space. 
and here we're going to look at it because it's easier to understand this way as let's say this is our monitor we're going to put our axis here our x-axis and our positive y-axis positive y-axis yeah is pointing downward now okay downward so this should make a little bit of intuitive sense now when you think about it as a viewport when it's actually when we're ready to finally draw if you watch the previous tutorial you would know that the way the pixels are drawn are from the top left of your computer screen it's gonna scan them each line from left to right and from top to bottom so from the top left to the bottom right so it makes sense to put the origin up here and to flip the y-axis to point downward so that we can always go into a positive direction down to the bottom right. And again, this is convention, but this is really the standard for the most part. It, some, some of them will have them in different places. You're just going to need to understand the pipeline of whichever system you're working in, and you'll be fine. But in viewport space, essentially what we're doing is taking the origin right, that was over here at one point, and, wow, excuse me, and moving it right, to the top left corner. And we're also then flipping the y-axis. Um, there will be a scale involved where we need to make this camera here fit the actual screen, uh, the actual viewport or screen. And that <clears throat> is going to involve some scaling as well. But for the sake of it, you can see it as taking this image and scaling it out to fit this and then moving our axis up here so that it can be drawn from the top down, top left to bottom right. So that essentially is viewport space. Now quickly to explain why screen space and viewport space are the same for us for the sake of this tutorial. This is this would be if they were different we would have like you know if you wanted to do a split screen like multiplayer or something you could have separate images you could have uh, something here going on something here something here and something here and this could be like you know player one two three what they see so you'd have multiple cameras in your worlds right you would have multiple viewports and screen space would be the culmination of combining each separate viewport from its space into screen space by shrinking it down and making it fit onto the screen but because we only have one viewport and we're scaling it to fit the screen screen space and viewport space now become the exact same thing there is no stage you could think of it as just like multiplying it by the identity matrix to get to screen space. So they are the same thing for now. Uh, lastly, we'll talk about uh, what culling and what clipping are real quick. Um, culling happens in world space, as I show up here. It would be the act of excluding an entire object from the pipeline. So this one, we can see visually that it is nowhere inside the camera and when we look at it from camera space obviously that's true because it's not in our scene at all once we're in our third space you would think that maybe that means you do this in camera space but because we're in the world we know where the camera is we know the camera's orientation and we know its size and what it can do so there's no reason why we can't do it in world space and that's a good thing. The reason why we do culling is because it's a logical optimization. It takes computations to multiply certain things by a change of basis matrix to take it all the way through the pipeline. Why would we take this through the entire pipeline, get it all the way to screen space, multiplying it by all these matrices, only to not draw it anyway? So the earliest we can discover that we won't need it, we can leave it out. And that's exactly what we do in world space. If it's outside the camera viewport, we just stop taking it through the pipeline. We're done. Like, just throw it out. We don't need it for this frame. All right? That's culling. Now, clipping is the act of cutting out a portion of an object. Culling is excluding the whole thing. Clipping is excluding a portion. And the circle is the example of that because we chopped off this other half right here right so we took only a piece of it um, one really cheesy way to remember this is that clipping is what you do to your fingernails and you don't clip off your entire fingernail you only clip off the portion of it that hangs over your finger so just that's how you can remember that clipping is where you're only taking out a piece of something and culling 
this is where you take out the entire object. And you may wonder why these operations are different, and they are, they're very different. Uh, one of the easiest examples of that would be, let me do it up here. Let's say this is our screen. And let's say we had a square. Let's put him here. All right, there's our square. Um, everything in graphics is made of triangles, all of it. So even a square or a quad like this would be would actually consist of two separate triangles. So this would be the first one, and show the second, and this would be the second. Yeah. So what happens when we clip it? What does it look like? Now everything, as I said, is made of triangles, which means everything has to continually be made of triangles as we reach each stage in the pipeline. So if we were to clip this in world space, and we are now in camera space, as you can see, there's a major problem here because this orange guy is no longer a triangle. All right, and that's the issue. This is why the clipping algorithm is very different from culling because culling is simple. You just leave it out. You don't do anything with it. Clipping, you have to come up with a way to create new triangles. This one is still a triangle here, but we still had to define new points. It's a different size triangle. It's kind of hard to see in the corner there. But this orange one is no longer a triangle, so we have to define a new point, and we have to split it into separate triangles. All right, so this becomes our new triangle here, like so, and this we use red, and then we have a triangle here. So what once was a square, and it was comprised of two triangles, now is three. We have the green one, the red, and the blue in order to take it to the next stage in the pipeline. Okay, so keep that in mind. Clipping has its own uh, algorithm that needs to be done to clip off a portion of an object. And culling will just, it's a lot easier because we can just leave it out as soon as we know that the entire thing is outside of the camera's range. All right, so as a recap, model space is where an object uh, is defined in terms of itself. It's the center of its own universe. We then will scale and rotate and translate it in some fashion to put it into a world where we populate it with other instances of models and whatnot. We actually place a camera in it. Then we take it to camera space, which is where the, the new origin is the camera's center, and we're viewing it from how the, the camera would see the world. And lastly, we take it to viewport space, where we move the origin to the top left, we flip the y-axis, and we scale it to fit the screen that the user is, uh, you know, what it's being displayed on, and that way we can start sending it so that it can be drawn from the top left to the bottom right, as we learned in the previous tutorial on how monitors uh, fill in pixels. So that's about it for the overview of, let me be clear, this is the 2D graphics pipeline. Um, in 3D, we will actually be doing projections, which is where we take these three-dimensional objects and we project them onto a 2D plane, but it does not need to be done for 2D, so we're not going to worry about it for now until we get there. Um, but that basically sums it up. You just perform some operations on it, which we're going to get into quite a bit of depth for each one, and eventually you started here with some model and you ended up drawing that model on the screen in some fashion. All right. Until next time, take care.